Welcome to the SketchUp Academy Toolbox series. In this series, we'll be talking about all the different tools that are available for you to use in SketchUp. The first thing you want to do when you uh, get started with this series is make certain that you have the large tool set open. This is a toolbar. And if you do not, which typically would not be true when you first open SketchUp initially, uh, we need to show you how to get that. Because all the tools, and I'm not going to say every tool, but the majority of the tools you're going to use in SketchUp are located in this toolbar. If you had nothing else open, you'd be pretty good uh, in terms of working with SketchUp. So how do we get that? I'll park this over here in the side. You can go A to the View menu and pick Toolbars from the top. So the menu along the top of the screen and then Toolbars. And you'll get a window here for Toolbars. Uh, depending on what's in your SketchUp program, you'll have either a few or a lot of these. I have quite a bit because of all the stuff I've got in here. But here's your large tool set. And you'll notice there's a little check box and a check mark in it. That means it's open. If I uncheck that, just click on it, that toolbar goes away. Click on it, comes back. If you also right click on any toolbar anywhere uh, in SketchUp, you get the same list. This list is a little different looking, but I think actually maybe a little easier to use because it's easier to get to and uh, it's bigger. <laughs> it's easier to see. So there's the checkbox, the check mark for the large tool set. Check it, uh, uncheck it, and it goes away. Check it, and it comes back. So w what's the point of all that? We're going to use these tools in this tool toolbar series or toolbox series we'll run through all these different tools, one at a time. Uh, today's uh, lesson is on the line tool. The line tool, as you can see in this icon down here, is a red pencil, kind of at a tilt. Uh, you'll find it in the large tool set up here toward the top left. So working with it, we can click on that icon and then come out on the screen and just click anywhere. Just one click, let go. Drag this out. And if you'll notice this line, I can, I'm can i just moving the mouse. I can move this wherever I like. I can draw a line in virtually any direction. But SketchUp doesn't work really well when you just are arbitrary like that. It wants you to draw on axes. And what are the axes? These guys right here, green, red, that's horizontal. That's your horizontal plane. And blue, vertical plane. Keep in mind we're working in three dimensions now, so we have x, y, and z. So when you're drawing in SketchUp, the concept here, and it's really important to stick to this, is to draw on axes. So click first point, drag out. And what I want you to see is that that line turned green as I moved it over. If I move my mouse, I, I'm no, not holding down any mouse buttons, just moving a mouse, it'll click into green, it'll click into red, and it'll click into blue. And it's just a matter of kind of moving the mouse around and finding that particular situation. If you're not comfortable with finding that, there are some what we call inference locking, or essentially locking into the axes tools. If you drag this line out on the green and you hold shift, press and hold shift, that line is now locked on that green axis. You have to get it going on that axis, but I can't. I can move my cursor wherever I want and that line will stay on that green axis. The other option you have is to just tap the left arrow key. You will do the same thing. So if you're struggling a little bit with staying on axes, you have those two tools to help you out. Shift, hold, press and hold shift, 
or tap the left arrow key for the green axes. Tap the right arrow key for the red axes. You can see no matter where my cursor is, that stays on red. Tap the up arrow key for the blue axes. And all you have to do is tap it. As you, If you tap one, it, move, it changes from one to the other. So it's dynamic change. You don't have to do anything special. OK? Uh, when you get used to working at SketchUp, you're probably not going to need those anymore, but they're kind of a good crutch initially. Click, drag out. I'm going to stay on green. Click, and there's my first line. SketchUp provides a nice uh, little option here that says, oh, do you want to draw another line? We'll let you draw another line. It, it picks the first point for you, uh, starting from the last point of the previous line. So click, drag, click, drag, click, drag, click, drag, click, finish. Now what's happened there is that's all on the red and green axes, so it's flat. If I tilt this up, you'll see it's basically virtually flat. That's also what's called coplanar. So all of these lines on axes are in the same plane. Uh, best way to think about that um, is, say you drew on the wall of your bedroom, and that would be coplanar. Everything you drew on that wall would be on the same plane. That's what we're trying to do here. You'll also notice that the lines, when closed, so I went all the way around and finished this object, created a face. That's really the whole point in SketchUp. We're trying to create faces. Lines require are required all the way around the edge of the face. In other words, a closed object. I'm going to erase this. E for the eraser tool, by the way, or this little pink pearl up here in the large tool set. We'll draw a line again. Click, drag, click. Now what we don't know at this point, that's totally arbitrary, correct? Uh, how do we control the length of that line? If you look in the bottom left, down here, you can see this box says length. This is what's called a VCB or information box. There's a lot of terms for it. Uh, but it, in this case, when you're drawing a line, it says length. And you'll notice the box next to it has uh, numerical values. That's the length of that line that we're going to draw. So it's dynamic. As you move it, that, that changes. I wouldn't necessarily use that to try to estimate just exactly how long that line is. But you can type in a distance if you'd like. So we just drag this out and kind of let it float out in space. Let go of the mouse. I'm going to type in 8 feet, 8 apostrophe, and hit Enter. That's an 8-foot long line. Drag it out in the green axis. I'll type in six feet, hit enter. Six foot long line. Go into red. Let's say five feet, hit enter. Five foot long line. Now, if I need something that's not exactly the same number of, you know, e even feet, it's inches, fractions, that sort of thing. Uh, it's eight foot, let's say eight foot six. Type in eight apostrophe six, no spaces, hit enter. Try to get this on the blue axis here. There's red. You also notice that these lines don't look parallel. That's because we're working in perspective. So you have to watch for the color. Um, it can be a little tweaky in your head and looking at it going, well, that doesn't look straight. It is straight, believe me. It's just that things in three dimensions in SketchUp are in perspective. So they're actually vanishing to a point on the horizon. So we'll drag it out on the red. And we'll type in 8 foot 6. So 8 foot, no space, 6. Uh, and then space, 3 quarter. So that's 8 foot 6 and 3 quarters of an inch. Hit enter. You can also type in 8 foot 6.75. It's another option for that same input.
in this box down here in the VCB, don't try to highlight this and type information in there. It's not made for that purpose. I think in a Mac you actually can do that, but this is all Windows based for me. Uh, you can't do that. It's just uh, data. It's information back to you. It's telling you what you're doing. So all the information you need in terms of dimensions and lengths of these lines, you type them in. And if you notice, let's say I type in 12 foot 4, that's what shows up, shows up in the VCB. So again, that's just exporting information to you so you can see what it is you're doing. Type in 12 foot 4 and hit enter. Now, Say I want to change my mind. Maybe I don't want that line 12 foot 4. Maybe I want it to be 8 foot 7. So I'll just type in 8 foot 7. And yeah, that's not what I wanted. Let me try that again. Drag that line out. Let's call it 9 feet. And I changed my mind. I want it 6 feet. Type in 6 feet. Hit enter. It's making me look dumb here. Let's do this again. Eight feet. Then I'm going to change my mind to type 12 feet. I'm going to type seven feet. And what you're noticing is that line length keeps adjusting. That's a cycle. As long as you don't break that cycle, for example, go draw another line someplace or a circle, something of that nature, uh, you can continually change your mind. Kind of nice. Yeah. Uh, CAD programs don't really do this too well. I can go on the blue axis over here, do the same thing. I can type in 12 feet, hit enter, and I could come back down and connect to that. Now what's the difference between these figures, this one, this triangle, and this one over here? Why is this one made a face and these have not? This is a closed object. And this also represents the minimum number of edges that you could have to develop a face. At least three. This is not closed. As soon as I would close these lines, so I'm going to connect the points here, you develop a face. Now edges can exist. I'm going to go ahead and delete these faces, so I'm going to select them and hit the delete key. Select, delete. What you notice is those edges can exist without the faces. I can eliminate this one too. So you inadvertently erase the face and you want it back. Pick a point anywhere on one of these lines and basically trace it and you'll get the faces back. That's what's called healing a face. Okay, so I would play with that a little bit. And believe me, you're going to erase faces that you didn't mean to. So that's the length of a line. That's how you draw a line. Uh, everything you create in SketchUp will, for the most part, be on axes. Uh, the whole point of that is that it keeps things coplanar. It's important to keep things coplanar. Uh, if I draw a line, and I get here off axes. I can still do it, but I have to be careful. Okay, now that one, why didn't that one fill in and this one did? Well, that one right there is not coplanar. If you look at it, it's actually a couple triangles hooked together. That's the importance of staying on axes. You can see that looked pretty good when it was here, right? It looked like maybe some kind of parallelogram. But that's what I actually drew. So staying on axes is important. If you run into this problem and you're not sure, if you connect the diagonal, you will create the faces. Again, three edges makes a face. That's the bare minimum. Any three points in space, no matter how you draw them, you can be completely arbitrary about that. They will make a face because they just naturally are coplanar. There's no way to be non-coplanar with three points. 
but anything beyond three points, it's very easy to do that. So we're drawing lines, and I come along. We're going to stay on axes. And what I want you to see here now is that I can drag this one out, and if I come and hover over that end point of that first line and drag this toward me on the red axis, you're going to see the two black dots developed uh, at the end of the line I'm drawing at the, and the end of the line I hovered over. Uh, that's inferencing. SketchUp will attempt to try to find a point to align with. So if you watch for that, the line I just drew there is now exactly the same length as the other line. I connect that together and I get a face. Okay. So there's little aids in SketchUp that will help you develop uh, kind of intuitive methods to draw. As you go through SketchUp over time, these will become very natural. With lines, you see these on the edge are dark. And if I draw on this face, and I don't connect that to anything, these lines are all dark. It hasn't done anything to this face. Typically with a line on a face, what you're trying to do is cut the face. What does that mean? I'm going to chop that piece out of it. That now is a separate piece. So again, I've, cl in, I've closed that shape, and it allows me to actually cut this face. Really the whole point of SketchUp. Because with that, I can do this. And I can do this. That's the push-pull tool. We'll get into that a little further down in the series. But the way I look at SketchUp is that everything I'm doing is cutting faces into smaller pieces. No matter how I draw across this, as long as I connect from one end to the other, not just out in space here, that doesn't do anything for me. If I connect it together, it does. But if I don't, I, it uh, doesn't split that face. Notice that these lines are dark it tells you that one of two things. Either those lines are not on that face or they're not connected. Or they're not cutting the face. Notice this one is light. That means I've cut that face. Okay? That's critical when you're drawing lines. The other thing you will find with lines, and this is going to be my last point, is if you draw lines across other lines, Those lines are divided into separate pieces. So anytime a line intersects with anything else, it will create separate chunks. What you're seeing, these little blobs on the end, those are endpoints. So this is a little confusing initially, but that, if you were a CAD worker, uh, which I did for many, many years, you would call that an intersection. But in SketchUp, that's actually four endpoints. Every time you cross lines, it makes separate pieces. It has to do that in order to cut these faces separately. I'll just draw a few lines here. Okay, that's important. Why is it important? Because with push pull, the whole idea in SketchUp is we can extrude these shapes and get them to be three-dimensional. OK? That's a bit of, about it on lines. Uh, we'll be covering it more as we get in depth in the other tools. But you can see that the line tool is pretty much everything you need. You can draw almost virtually anything with just the line tool if you want. Uh, if I cut faces in half, just a couple little quick examples. I can do things like that. That was the move tool I just used to do that. Uh, but you would be, say, drawing windows in a building, something of that nature. And I zoom into this. I can push pull that in to make a window. Okay. 
essentially that's the line tool. So L is the shortcut, and you've got the icon up here in the large tool set. We'll be moving on to part two uh, very soon. Next piece of this tutorial will be on the rectangle tool. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.